the Sydney Conservatorium Jazz Orchestra. Another big round of applause for them. Amazing. Welcome to International Jazz Day. And we have a very exciting session for you lined up. It's with Antonio Hart. And he's one of the world's greatest alto saxophonists. And he's brought some friends from the Herbie Hancock Institute. So please give them all a big round of applause as they come onto stage. Thank you. What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? OK, let's try that again. How y'all doing? Yeah? I do this with every band, you know? I'm coming up here with some energy. I'm like, how y'all doing? Hey, man. Now, how y'all doing? Aren't y'all happy to play music? Yeah? That's the attitude. So um, you guys did a lot of work on this composition. Um, for me, it was a little, a little bit on the bright side. It's a little faster than how the Vanguard band plays it, actually. Um, so I would like to bring the tempo back a little bit. And the, the one thing we need to think about when we play music, especially I can talk to you guys, because you guys are college-level musicians and professionals, obviously. Um, what are some of the elements in, that make music? What are some of the things that we need to have for it to be music? Yes, dynamics, what else? OK, feeling, emotion, what else? Come on. Phrasing. Phrasing more people in the band, 17 of you guys. <laughs> OK, we have contrast. There's no wrong answers anyway, so throw some stuff out. Of course, playing in tune, what else? Balance, yes, OK, balance is a section. What else? Say it again. I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to read what's on the page. Yes, we need, we need to think about our dynamics. We need to think about our artic articulation. We need to think about space. We need to think about phrasing or groove. We need to think about our colors, our timbre of each instrument. We need to think about blending in sections, knowing who has the melody, who does not have the melody, all these things. Rhythm section, how to shape and how to set us up into each section. What you guys are doing already, I would just like to go under the hood just a little bit more and talk about some things that I heard that I think could make the performance a little bit, a little bit stronger. But it was already strong. You guys, it sound, they sound pretty amazing, right? Yeah. yeah so, um, like I said, I, you were like, but I, I like to slow it down just a little bit. And um, let's just go from the beginning. I'll be stopping quite a bit, guys. So don't don't take offense to that. I'll just be stopping. And also, you have the guys from the Herbie Hancock Institute, just to rap to you guys too. You know. It's, it's good because you got, you know, you got this. It's funny, you know, I used to be like the young guy. You know, I was always like the young kid in the band, and now I'm like the old guy. It's, it's hilarious to me. It's funny, you know. So you have the young guys that, that are your age that, um, you know, you can rap and, and talk about things in this section, you know, because these, these guys are doing it every day with um, a lot of masters, so they might have some gems to share with you, you know, and also I'll, I'll do my best from up here, okay? So all this is is just an exchange. You guys already play well. We're just going to try to take it another notch higher. OK? Let's go from the top. One, two, or oh, one, two, three, four. OK, OK, first thing. I want it softer than that. What does it say, double P? What is that, pianissimo, right? You guys, for me, that was a piano. One, two, or one, two, three, four. Yes. Yes.
Can you? Very nice. Yeah, bring that out, the bass and the uh, bass trombone, like you did. When we get to measure um, 55, give me a little bit more, a little bit more attitude, especially um, on a soprano. Um, make it a little, a little more street. Let's go from um, 43. So bring that out, bass from on bass. 43. See, it feels like we're like we just in this car and we just like we just we just we just cruising, nowhere to go. Before it's not, it's not not the tempo that you did that you played wasn't fine. It was fine for me. It was just a little more nervous, you know. And this is new for you guys, but somewhere in between, what you're playing would be comfortable for me. But where you played was perfect. 43. One. Yes, sir. Just that, just that section right there. Yeah, and just bring it out a little bit more. Give me a, for, especially for you, give me a little bit more crescendo. Um, measure 51, guys. Give me, it's not written there, but the part is telling you that. Give me a little crescendo. And measure 55 and 56. You can see that part. Do da do de do da. So bring that up. I'm sure you guys did that already. 43, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, 43, can we do ba do di da do da So crescendo and decrescendo. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yes. Again. Yes. Crescendo. Measure 68, give me a little bit more on that. You guys did it, but bring it out just a little bit more. Um, can we go from 59? 59. One, two, or one, two, soft, go. Yes. That, that, in measure 60, um, 63 and 64, you guys gave me that crescendo and date. I think that's a little much. I think, I think we can take that half, half of what you guys just did. Just give me a, a crescendo, day crescendo. Same place, 59. One, two, three, four. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, better. slow down. We're slowing down. So we're playing softer. And usually what happens when we play softer, the tempo drops back. So we still have to have that, that feeling of that. And it's funny because we're not metronome. So music has a place where it locks in and feels good. But as a rhythm section, you have to hear and say, we're slowing down. And you have to have an agreement between. So you can't be like in your music. You can't be, you have to look at each other and have an agreement of where the beat is. Like just like somebody plays on top of the beat, somebody, somebody plays behind. We have to say, this is where we're meeting. You know, so right now we would like, we would die, right? So we, we want to keep it moving ahead. It, and it happens, it happens to everybody. The great rhythm sections, it's not a big deal. It's just playing together and being conscious, cognizant of what's going on rhythmically. Um, let's go right where the solo starts at 77. It's hot up here, right? <laughs> one, two, a one, 
Two. Oh, and when you guys come in, come in really soft. Softer than you did before. One, two, or one, two, three, uh. <laughs> Guys, um, when you when you play those rhythms, try not to punch it so much, you know, because it feels like my attention leaves the solos, and I'm like, okay, they're playing some rhythmic things. It's a way of playing it, but playing it light, you know. It was it was it was just too much where it, it took my attention away, right? The rhythms are fine, just finesse it a little bit more. That was better, guys. That was that felt really good. Let's do that where you guys start having that rhythm. 97, 97, one, two, or one, two. Three, four. solo. Um, I need you to set us up more. We need to be set up more for um, 129. That was nice. You see how I put that little crescendo in that last measure? They, they do that in the Vanguard band, actually. Um, can we go from 113? 113, and um, a little soft to finesse it, um, lead the section. A lot of times, I mean, all you have is this piano mark there, right? So follow the arc of what's going on. If it, if there's, if it goes up, there's some level of crescendo and day crescendo. So as, as a leader of the section, you do that and you guys follow. Okay? One, one, thirteen. One, two, or one, two, three, four. <laughs> Killing, man. I just want to keep on hearing you. So you see what's happening at 113? We have a phrase that's repeated, right? Da, 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 da. And then it's, it's again. So let's think of it like, like a floor. Like we start in the first, the first four measures, the first floor. Then we move to the second floor. And then we build to the last quarter note, right? Here we go, same place. 113. One, two, or one, two, softer, four, one. <laughs>
this, man. Yeah. Um, when we come in with 117, right? Um, we start off softer. Every four measures we build, and we build and build till till we get to um, going up to 185. By 185, we need to be bigger, right? So can we, without the solo for now, um, can we go from uh, 177? Is that cool, guys? 177. One, two, a one, two, three, soft. Okay, even, even softer, like pianissimo, all right? One, two, three, four. We, we, we should be a little bit, just a little bit more, and then give me that decrescendo down into um, 188, right? So let's try that one more time. And for you, right, because they're playing so soft and they're playing these, these rhythmic phrases, play inside of it, you know? Think about how you can play rhythmically with what's going on, right? Let's, let's do it with the solo, same place. 177. One, two, soft, two, three, four. Part of the, of the arrangement, that call and response thing, that that part of before I don't get that part, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, uh, um, let's go from uh, 225. So really, act like you're talking to each other, right? One, 225. One, two, or one, two, three, four. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta, we gotta build that up. I still want more attitude. I'm getting more attitude from my, from my um, soprano sax. Follow, follow, follow him as the lead. So again, follow the arc. You know, give me those, those little crescendos. Same place. One, two, twenty-five. One, two, three, four. <laughs> something else. All right, so let's go to the same place, right? Let's start softer. Every time we build, and then we drop down like we just did and go to the next session. Can we do that? One, two, a one, two, three, four. More, more. I need, I need more, I need more. I'm sorry, sorry. 
<laughs> I, need, I need some more crescendo. Like we're, we're building and building. So I need the rhythm section to build too. Okay? You okay? All right. Here we go. Same place. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Sped up a little bit. One, two. Pull it back a little bit. Together. It's just those, those little things that make it a little bit more musical. You know, it's exaggerating the dynamics and the phrasing and playing together. It, for me, it felt, it just, it slowed down a little bit. You know, if we can keep the same tempo, keep the same intensity, it's like this, this thing, we want to give them some of this. Then we want to give them this. We want to give them this. You know, it's like that. That's what makes music what it is. Can we play it from the top? Great solos. Both of you guys. I'm going to split the difference. Right here. We good? So it says pianissimo, right? So we look at that for the first time. We know that means very soft. But now, from your point of view, you think you're playing very soft. For us, we don't get very soft unless you play very, very soft. When you play very, very soft, we get very soft. When you play very, very loud, we get loud. So same thing on the drums. What you're hearing on that side of the drums is not what's coming across here. So when it tells you to play soft, you really have to do that. In big band drumming, you got to make sure all those hits have to be really big. It's not like a small group thing. You have to really pop those hits, right? You guys did great. On it, before, when you played those doom, doom, ding, doom, that's what it felt like. It's that doom, doom, ding. It's, it's got to feel relaxed, doom, you know? If not, it's just like, okay, we're playing in meters. We're playing all this multi. No, it's supposed to still, we're supposed to feel this the whole time. Dun, dun, ding, right? And make sure when you make those hits on the, on the piano. Ba, 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 ba. You know, it has to be in time. If not, it's, it feels like a flam. All right, here we go. Top. One, two, soft. Two, three, four. Ah, nah, I didn't like that. You heard that, right? You heard it. Ugh, ugh. All right, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Don't slow down. now like it's like you're giving me like I need more cowbell I need I need more you know I need that section you should be like breaking the skins okay this feels good man wow this is nice can we go from uh, 185 
Actually, I want to go from that trombone section where we build, actually. From 177? No, it's before 177. 160, I'm sorry, 169. 169. One, two, or one, two, three, four. <laughs> I think that was too long. <laughs> it felt good, right? That's it. I mean, just little dynamic things. And, and a lot of what I did was just listening to the band, listening to the Vanguard band playing, and just some personality things that, things that I like when I, when I play in a section. I mean, it's very much Thad Jones, you know, because of the instrumentation and a lot of the rhythms is, 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 is textbook Thad Jones. So if you listen to that band, you'll hear how this music should be phrased, you know? More drums, like I said, when you're, those sections, you have to really set up the band, and when it's big, it's supposed to be really, really big, and then bringing it back, finessing the rhythm section parts, following the lead, it feels good. 
Um, that's the only thing you guys have for me. Do you have any questions or anything you want to talk about? Same thing. It's like I, I flew all the way from New York to Australia. Um, guys, I played with the Dizzy Band. I played with the Ellington Band. I played with the, the Vanguard Band. I played with the Mingus Band. I played with all of these big bands for many years, as well as the small groups with Roy Hargrove, Nat Adley, McCoy Tyner, Art Blakey, all these guys. I'm here for you guys. You know, if you, if you don't ask me any questions, it's fine. You guys have any questions? Yes, sir. Hey, are you the type of guy who feels the rhythm instead? Feels the rhythm instead of what? Like, like counting it. You always have to count. I know, but are you the type of guy who prefers like feeling it instead, if you know what I mean? You have to feel it. Yeah. It's both. You know, it's, it's, you know, people think, okay, just your body is just jazz. I just feel it. Yes, of course you feel what the time is. If I'm playing European classical music, I feel what the time is. If I'm playing reggae, I feel what the time is. If I'm playing any kind of music, yes, the time is there. But we should be able to feel the groove for sure. So you, part of your question is, should I, should I feel it? Yes. Should I count it? Yes. Cool. Cool? Yeah. Anybody else? I have the same question about the world. Oh, yeah, there you go. We got you again. The piano, in particular, it depends on it, it depends on the arranger. You know, like Jim McNeely, he, he's a piano player. You know, so I mean, depending on his particular voicings that he wants, or just the the rhythm comping, because it's a percussion instrument, as well as a chordal instrument. So it depends on the role of the arrangement. If you're thinking about Count Basie, it was more like Colors and Space. Duke Ellington, the same thing, Colors and Space. You know, different people play it differently. So when I write for it. Um, it depends on what my arrangement is. You know, if I want orchestra type things, because that's the full orchestra, I might write something in a way where he has to play like, like an Art Tatum kind of vibe. Or it could be something where it's just two or three notes at a time, like a Hank Jones or something like that. It depends on what the arrangement is. You know, and the same, same thing. It depends on how they, how they play together according to the style. Like this, for me, when I hear this arrangement, this is, this is like, again, textbook Thad Jones music, you know? So there's a certain kind of style in terms of the rhythm that they're using. Like, in time, he's not looking at me. And, <laughs> and, and where's, where, the time, where the time is kind of ambiguous, but it's still there. And then it's like, it's like that Jones music for me is like really playful. It's like very complex. Like, you get these clusters of chords, and then you get this like little melody that's like, like, a, like watching a Bugs Bunny cartoon or something. Like, da, 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 da. you like, where'd that come from? Then, then it's like this, this incredible thing. You know, so depends. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I've been tr attempting <laughs> to play this music um, for a long time. I uh, I just give you a brief history. I, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. That's on the east coast of the United States, and um, I went to a performing arts high school where um, we had academics, but we also had we had music, we had visual art, dance, and theater. So half our day was the music and the other half of the day was the academic part. And um, for those four years, I didn't play any jazz at all. It was all European classical. So my, my teacher studied in France with one of the French um, um, saxophone players, Jean-Marie Londex. So I was playing the Ebert, the Creston, and the Glazunov. That's what I auditioned for Berkeley with. And they were like, why are you coming to Berkeley? And I was like, because I want to play jazz. And primarily, the, how I got into jazz was because I was playing all this European classical music and saxophone quartets and things like that, but I didn't see anybody that looked like me in the orchestras. You know, there were very few African Americans in the orchestras, and you know, and then a lot of the music, um, the classical music is through composed. You know what I mean when I say through composed? That means everything is written down, the dynamics, the articulation, the phrasing, and you have you have a room for interpretation and expression, but. I was like, well, I started listening to the jazz, and I was like, you can make up your own thing? This thing called improvisation? I was like, I want to do that. And then I saw a bunch of people that looked like me. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And um, so I, I ended up going to Berkeley not knowing much about jazz other than I liked it. And I was the lowest guy on the totem pole. I mean, the lowest guy on the totem pole. I didn't make any of the good ensembles, nothing, right? So I said, OK, who are the best players at school? And I, I found out who the best players were, like the top players at Berkeley. 
And of course, I'm the young guy. They wouldn't talk to me or anything because they, you know, the upperclassmen. So I would be like behind a trash can, <laughs> looking at like the guy be talking to a girl, and I'd be like, you know, or they would they would have sessions, and I would just stick my ear in the door because they wouldn't let me play. But also, I was practicing like 12, 13 hours a day. That's why I would wake up two o'clock in the morning sweating and go in the practice room and practice. And people would be down, like Donnie McCaslin and all those people. You know, these people that you guys know, Mark Turner. Um, Seamus Blake, all of us were classmates, and we were practicing all the time. So that's how I got into the music. And slowly, the guys that didn't practice stayed here, and I just kept on moving up. And then fortunately, I met a young man, you probably have heard of him, he's a great trumpet player, he just passed away, his name is Roy Hargrove. And we, um, we played a lot at Berkeley, and then he got signed to RCA, and um, that was my senior year of college, and he asked me to join his band, and that's when we started recording. We started making his first records, and then I got signed to RCA, and um, I went to college and got my master's, and still on the road. And once I left Roy's band, I went to play with the, um, the Dizzy Gillespie Orchestra, the big band, which I stayed with for like 20 plus years. And then I, I've been playing, I played with Nat Adderley, Cannibal Adderley's brother for three and a half years, and just recorded hundreds of CDs with so many great people. And I never thought that was gonna happen for me you know, because I started so low on the totem pole, but I just, I just wanted to do it. So the, the short answer to your question is, I've been playing for a long time and still trying to learn how to play. <laughs> yes, sir. Could you talk about the importance of doubling in your career as a big band saxophone player and, and uh, how this has rise to, to what it seems to maybe balance that saxophone and that, and that work? Doubling. Yeah, um, fortunate for me, I don't have to do that that much. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there was a time where I thought I was gonna be like a, a Broadway show musician. So yeah, I was practicing a lot. And in fact, back at the, the high school, I had a, a teacher that was teaching me clarinet. He was a Juilliard professor, and I did just enough of my lessons, just enough for the recital, because I did not want to play the clarinet. I just, the clarinet, I just couldn't feel the clarinet. I wanted to play flute, but they wouldn't let me play flute, right? But I, when I went to Berkeley, I, um, I did a, a, a class, it was Herb Pomeroy, and it was like his recording band, so I had to play clarinet, and I had to play flute, um, and there was a time where I was studying piccolo and all these other instruments because I thought that was gonna be my career, but it didn't um, end up being. Now, a lot of times in the bands that I play in, I'm usually playing alto and flute, but um, if you're playing in the Lincoln Center band, you're gonna play all the different instruments. If you're playing in a lot of these these, these um, orchestras is required. And back in the day, if you guys go back in history, the alto pla saxophone player played violin and everything. It was like, you would see all these strings up there and all these horns. So you guys are lucky, you just, you know, you just have a few horns. I think that's important. And, and, and each, you know, I have an R13 in the closet. That's a, that's a buffet clarinet, in case you don't know. And it has a lot of dust on it. But one day, I might pick it up and um, play some etudes on it. But yeah, doubling is important. It gives you, a, um, each instrument for me is, is a different spirit. And it, and it allows you to hear and feel a different spirit and different ways of expressing. But if you're, if you're trying to do like, if you come to New York and you want to do Broadway or you want to get a gig, the more instruments that you play well, the better your chances. The more you can write, the more you can arrange, the more you know how to teach. These are the skills that you guys are going to need to be successful. I don't know what it's like in Australia, but that's what it's like in the United States. You can't just be a good player. That's expected. You're supposed to be a virtuoso. You're supposed to be able to read. You're supposed to be able to improvise. But you have to have those other skills. And then, you, more importantly, you have to have people skills. You know, you have to be a good person. You have to be humble. You have to show up on time. You have to show up dressed correctly like you are. All those things are the things that, that, keep, that make you successful in a career. And like I said, stand humble, because I know a ton of musicians that are brilliant. I mean, phenomenal, but they don't work. Because people just don't want to deal with them. It's not that they can't do the job. It's just like, I'd rather be with the number two player because they're going to be there on time, no attitude, learn my music. Because if I choose the number one, it's going to show up. It's going to be bugging me about money or she's going to be bugging me about this. I don't, wanna, I don't have time for that. So being a good person, that's another way of being successful. I work all the time. My phone rings. I don't, I don't call people. Thank God. I wish I had a piece of wood. You know, I, I don't call people, but people know when they call Antonio or Hart what they're going to get. I'm going to show up on time. You give me your music. I'm going to learn your music. I got that score. I learned the score. I studied it. I didn't just come in here and wing it with you guys. It's important to me to do the right job because I want to be an example of what professionalism is for you guys. Yes. Yes, sir.
Okay. Um, well, we have to listen. A lot of times when we play, we don't listen anymore, especially when we're improvising. We just think about the harmony and we just want to get our stuff off. But there's a lot of things going on around us, you know? So what I was saying, what's your name? What up? What's up, Angie? What I, what, I was saying, what I was saying to Anthony was like, they were doing this nice little rhythm thing behind him. So before he went into like what he was going into, he could like tell a story and build and play off the rhythm, use space, you know, and be more, more melodic, you know. A lot of times we don't think about melodies. We think about how we can get from one place to the next. But think about how in that section, how I can just start it. Like I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking, walking faster than I'm running, opposed to like taking off right away. Which, is, which is an approach, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like so much space in there where you can really have fun, you know, being rhythmic, like Sonny Rollins. You know, it doesn't have to be that extreme, but something like that, right? But what you played was beautiful, and what you played was beautiful. I think we gotta get ready to end this, but um, how about another hand for these guys? <laughs> Let's try that again. How about a hand for the band? And let's continue to have a little more fans and I'm going to have a I think you have to agree, Antonio, your generosity with these young musicians is a perfect way to celebrate International Jazz Day. Uh, thank you so much to the Sydney Conservatorium Jazz Orchestra. I get over there. What a great section. Session. If you have a ticket for the Herbie Hancock Masterclass in the Hudson Room, doors will open at 1 p.m. for that. We do have one more session here, and that's at 3 p.m. for the Concert Jam. Just, that's going just to be bring me in the section. Um, and if you'd just like watch, the watch the tempo so it doesn't slow down. Have like it happens. You, when you start to feel it, look at each other and bring the tempo back. That. So to get down there, all you need to do is just follow my hand up that way and then go all the way down. <laughs> Thank you very much, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Man, great. What a great band, man. Wow. That's, you can tell. But that's not an easy chart, man. That's, that's a, when, I, when I heard that, I was like, ooh, they don't play that. <laughs> you guys killed it. I don't know what's happening.